The continent of Africa has seen generations of travelers, slave traders, explorers, missionaries, governors, and scholars of all kinds give out the image of Africa as one of nothing but poverty, barbarism, irresponsibility, and chaos. That is the focus of this expert meeting organized by UNESCO with the assistance from the African Union Commission to discuss on the general history of Africa. I think that uh, the first generation of African historians uh, dealt with this uh, problem and uh, uh, the eighth volume of the general history of Africa really contributed to destroy this negative view of the history of Africa. And we now are uh, engaged in a process uh, connected with uh, the African Union and the need to uh, build the African Renaissance. This can be done only by reevaluating uh, the general history of Africa to update uh, the writing and also to take in account what has been happening in the diaspora, especially in Central America, in Brazil and also in the United States. So we um, uh, have brought here uh, about 35, 40 researchers uh, from Africa and from the diasporas, uh, American and also European. And we have decided first to uh, reevaluate the general history of Africa. Uh, second, to uh, write a new book on African history, taking in account the present challenge, challenges of uh, globalization, uh, the issue as health, um, environment, uh, and all the trends which represent a threat for the African continent and also for the sovereignty of the African states. And also, uh, we have to take in account not only the American diaspora, uh, uh, which comes from uh, slavery, but also all the diasporas in Africa, in the Indian Ocean, and also in the countries like uh, India, uh, Turkey, uh, etc. Uh, our discussions were uh, very strong, but uh, rich and uh, fruitful. I think that we are uh, in the beginning of a new start, and I'm very confident that we shall do it. How, what do you think of the, 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 the how would be the, the reception of, or what do you expect will be the reception of the general history of Africa by an African diaspora, born American, think like an American, and doesn't know much about the continent? Well, I think that these uh, diaspora uh, think that uh, they are African, but they don't know what is to be African. So we are trying to give them uh, a view, a new view of African history from the most remote times until the present, uh, with uh, um, uh, an uh, accent, with uh, uh, a focus uh, on the struggles of African peoples to liberate themselves. Uh, and Ethiopia is a, a very good example of this. It is one of the most ancient states in the world. Uh, uh, it fought successfully against uh, invasion by Italian with uh, the well-known um, uh, Battle of Adua and also in the 30s and the 40s. And uh, we think that with this new uh, vision of uh, uh, the African diaspora, we shall uh, um, uh, build a bridge between the emergent uh, countries of uh, uh, Americas, especially Brazil, but also Venezuela, uh, Argentine, uh, Colombia, uh, uh, and the time will come when also the African diaspora in India will help us to build a bridge between uh, Africa and uh, Oriental Asia. Mais vous savez que nous parlons aujourd'hui beaucoup de panafricanisme, mais c'est une leçon qui nous est venue aux états unis Je vais aussi vous donner un autre exemple qui est récent. Il y a quelques années, vous savez, nous avons tous suivi sur les médias un film qui nous a beaucoup marqué, c'était Roots. 
C'était un dialogue, c'était un message qui nous venait de nos frères américains. Et puis aujourd'hui, entendre un Américain dire « Je suis un Afro-Américain ». Toute la lutte de ce grand pays est une leçon pour nous. Et tout ce que nous faisons aujourd'hui, nous n'avons pas grand-chose à leur apprendre. Nous leur demandons seulement, nous voulons donner l'écho à leur voix. Donc, euh, c'est très facile pour nous. C'est très facile. Et au contraire, tout le débat qu'on fait ici, on voudrait que la question de la diaspora, la question du panafricanisme, ne soit plus vécue chez nous comme euh, une espèce de reproche de ceux qui disent « vous nous avez abandonnés ». Non. Nous voulons maintenant dire « nous sommes tous ensemble, reconnaissons qui nous sommes, reconnaissons qui nous sommes et chacun travaillons pour euh, que nous occupions une place meilleure dans, dans le monde d'aujourd'hui. » Dans cette initiative, d'apprendre par exemple que euh, le 9e volume a été totalement financé par euh, le gouvernement du Brésil. Et le gouvernement du Brésil a même pris de l'avance sur les pays africains. Il y a dix ans, le gouvernement brésilien a pris une loi dans laquelle il dit il faut enseigner l'histoire de l'Afrique. Il faut que chaque Brésilien apprenne l'histoire de l'Afrique. Mais nous, quand on était peut-être plus, plus jeunes, ou bien euh, nos aînés à nous apprenaient que nos ancêtres étaient les Gaulois. Mais les Américains, les Américains, comme d'autres diasporas, n'ont pas oublié, eux, que les, leur, leur, leurs ancêtres étaient des Africains. Donc le lien pour nous est très, très, est très, très facile. Merci beaucoup, Sans C'est moi qui vous remercie. <rire> to the new Africa. You know, the General History of Africa was launched in the 60s, the project. It was exactly to respond to the racial prejudices, to the negative images still going and that uh, occur on the Africans and African history. You know, as you remember, as Africa was supposed to be a continent without history, without main important culture and, and civilization, and that it was always a continent that received people, uh, invaders from, uh, from uh, abroad. And that African uh, population, African uh, peoples never, uh, did not contribute a great deal to the progress of humanity. And it's Exactly, the General History of Africa is, was to respond to that prejudices in a scientific and methodological way, not, po not only politically, but scientifically. And that is why the newly independent African states ask the, the assistance of, of, um, of UNESCO to rewrite their history and to get the ownership of the discourses on their histories and culture. Mm -hmm. So that is the really the principal and the main objectives behind the journal history of Africa. Mm -hmm. And African scholars and historians really took, took that very seriously. They mobilize themselves, they create institutions, they make the necessary research. 350 of them uh, contribute to this monumental uh, achievement, monumental uh, collection of eight volumes each of volume around 1,000 pages, which cover the history of Africa from three million years ago up to the, the, to the 60s, 70s. So that was the achievement of the journalist of Africa. And from the beginning, it was clear for the initiators of this project to translate this, this knowledge into textbook, into curricula. And that, unfortunately, was not done sufficiently. Mm -hmm. Ten years af after the completion of the, of the general history of Africa, very few African uh, countries have integrated this knowledge into their curricula. Uh, and till now, today, we have a lot of countries w uh, who teach a history of Africa, which is still is uh, have uh, a certain Eurocentrism in it. So that's why UNESCO have launched the second phase of the General, Af General History of Africa in 2009, which is the pedagogical use 
of of this collection mm -hmm. is the objective though by unesco to penetrate this into schools so that p a young growing african children in primary school for example could understand their history better yes of course the you know as you know unesco is in charge of education and culture and this project is in uh, linking the culture to education so the objective of this second phase is to produce textbooks to produce what like, we, we call pedagogical material comprising curricular outline teacher guides textbooks historical atlas a glossary of new decolonized terminology paradigm and concept to be integrated in the different level of education the primary level we we have uh, we have designated uh, three age groups 10 to 12 13 to 16 year old and then 17 to 19 years old so for each of these different age group, we will uh, develop that material to, to be taught and to be integrated in the curricula of African countries. So the challenge is that we are, we wish to integrate, to develop a common content that should be integrated in all African countries which have different education systems. If we achieve to do that with the help of the African Union and the African government, of course, it will be Africa will be the only continent to have a, a common content in history to be taught in across Africa. That will be a, an achievement, and we are working on on, on that the direction. In the context of the African uh, Golden Jubilee, we talked about Pan-Africanism. And I talked about Pan-Africanism from the perspective, perspective of Brazil. And one of the points is exactly that. In the process, first of all, our uh, decolonization, independence occurred in a much earlier period of time. It was in 19. 1822, much time before that the notions of uh, Pan-Africanism emerged. Those notions em emerged in, in the 1900s. So we are, uh, let's say, ahead in this process of independence. Secondly, we have the, the question of language. The produ production of, uh, of, uh, of uh, con uh, knowledge mm -hmm. in Pan-African is uh, mainly in uh, English and in French. And so Brazil is a Lusophone country. It's uh, natural that uh, uh, in the, that time also the number of literate people were mm -hmm. very low. Mm -hmm. All these things made with um, that, uh, let's say, history, the culture of Africa didn't, uh, uh, has been implemented in the school. Another thing it was, and I think that this point is very, very important, is the question of uh, the, the, the process of building up the national, the national identity. This process of uh, construction of the national identity that started in uh, immediately after the end of slavery in Brazil, 1888, and the advent of the Republic, 1889, it was didn't take um, in, into consideration the different points of deport of, uh, of uh, the different uh, uh, peoples that now form Brazil. And in this sense, uh, and I think that you have been very successful in this model of create a national identity. And one Brazilia is one Brazilia, and that's it. Despite the fact that he's white, Afro-descendant, Asian uh, descendant, or so forth. But uh, the fact is that now I think that this model has accomplished his role. It's time that you give new elements. And in this sense, it comes the question of the teaching of the African history and culture in Brazil. And uh, I really hope that in the the next generation, you are already working on that. Youth, you know, much beyond f uh, football players and <laughs> carnival. <laughs> Yeah, you see, uh, there is uh, lots of commonalities between Ethiopia and Brazil. 
the attitude, the mindset, the approach, and the hospitality between Ethiopia, uh, within Ethiopian people, you can find in Brazil also. So there is a lot to be shared, and uh, the football, the samba dance, and uh, the agricultural policy, and uh, the pro-poor policy of Brazil, and the pro-poor policy of Ethiopia, there is uh, lots of commonalities between the two countries. What will be your wish for Africa in the next 50 years? Oh, the development, peace, stability, competitiveness with other, uh, with the rest of the world, you see, with other continents. Yeah. Thank you very much, Excellency. Thank you. Thank you very much. So let's just get you, it's Africa Day, let's yeah. just celebrate let's. by asking you, what will be your wish for Africa in the next 50 years? Prosperity, prosperity and unity. <laughs> is a continent that has a very bad press. When you speak of Africa in many places, they think misery, they think civil wars. But when I come to Africa, I see a lot of hope. What Africa wants as a dream? Africa wants to go back to a position within this little blue planet of ours, of being a place of pride a place where everybody will come here to learn, to visit, and to feel good. That is, I think, the dream and the future of Africa. Today is Africa Day, and are you going to party with, the, with all the Africans compatriots that you've been uh, meeting so yes. far? Our president is here. Okay. She's going to speak at Millennium Hall. Yeah. Our sister, the ambassador of Brazil in Addis Ababa, is gathering all of us here to celebrate. We celebrate the Day of Africa that is also, we are not far from Lucy, the birth of mankind. So the other continents are coming back home. We are here at the Ethiopia National Stadium where the football game between Ethiopia and Sudan is going to take place in a moment. This is part of the celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Organization of Africa Unity, now the African Union. This is all part of the Golden Jubilee of Africa. 